Well, I'm delighted to, to say I'm joined by John Haggerty, who is uh, out in the Far East, um, as I call it. And uh, he's, he's, he's out in the Far East, but he's from the Wolf Road, as I like to call it. He's, he's a Wal Walworth Road man, South London guy, but looking in ripper shape ahead of his contest in one championship. Tell us who you're fighting, John. Welcome to Fight Night. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll be taking on Felipe Lobo uh, at one championship. Um, yeah. What weight is that? Because you look ripped. Yeah. Uh, so this is at bantamweight. This is bantamweight Muay Thai. So it's uh, 65.8 kilo. You guys can go so for ready. hours. You could literally have a 50 round fight. You're so fit, aren't you? <laughs> well, I like to think so. <laughs> it's live, of course, on... Uh, or well, it's certainly on Sky Sports, so I believe it's live in the early hours of Sunday morning. Uh, John is one of the, uh, the, the British legends of, of Muay Thai. Um, the, he's a young man. But, John, it's a weird thing. I've got to ask you this. Obviously, we, we talked to so many different martial artists on fight night, from mixed martial arts to, to Muay Thai to kickboxing to boxing. Um, how did you first get into it? And clearly, you're addicted to it. Yes, yeah, so I first got into it through my dad. You know, he was uh, he was an MMA fighter himself. And then um, I started to go to the training sessions that he was doing. And then uh, I fell in love with it since then. And he put me on the path to Muay Thai. So um, he pushed me. He pushed me quite a lot. So I'm very thankful that he did because I'm in the position that I'm in now. Um, he was one of the dads that would be outside the school gates. And uh, all the friends are going out to the park playing football. I will be going to training. Um which at the time I wasn't really happy, but uh, like I said, I'm very thankful that I did get pushed, and um, yeah, we're here now. Tell me about I'm um, growing up. I say the Walworth Road. I mentioned the Walworth Road. It's kind of it's a beautiful part of London, but it's also quite street as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it can be as well. Um, I had a good group of friends. I had a, a, I've, got, I've still got a group of friends from primary school, um, still to this day, and we used to hang around the Walworth Road, and um, yeah, I've moved to Thailand away from everything, away from some distractions. Not that I'm easily distracted, but I'm just fully focused on my career uh, in Muay Thai. So I've moved to Thailand full-time now. Um, yeah, and the sky's the limit. No distractions in Thailand? Uh, I, stay in, I stay in fight camp. I, um, I go to a few restaurants every now and then. I try to uh, keep my head occupied. And um, yeah, that's it really. I don't know if you're in a relationship or married, but there's a lot of very beautiful female Thai fighters as well who flick from, you know, um, being these very elegant women to suddenly, you know, hmm. a load of head kicks and elbows. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm in a relationship now. I'm in a happy relationship with my girlfriend. But yeah, like you said, there is some lethal girls out there that, uh, that are doing the sport in Muay Thai. And um, props, props to them because they're killers. There's some killers in the one championship. Some female fighters also. Um, well, the, the, the funny thing is, you know, you mentioned that, um, killers. Remember the pretty killer, Man Barlow? Um, yeah. Very famous British Muay Thai fighter. When you go down some of the names, Jordan Watson, I've written a few down here, Steve Wakeling, Ronnie Green, you'll know all these guys. They're legends in the sport. And also uh, Liam Harrison, who was going to fight Floyd Mayweather, wasn't he? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, correct. Are you scheduled to fight Liam at some point? Uh, I think that was um, that was on the cards for the U a UK show. You know, I done my part. I got both belts in the one championship, and uh, we was just waiting on um, one championship to bring it to the UK. But I'm not too sure now. That fight's getting further and further away. Um, I think he wants to fight other people. I think he wants to go down other routes like boxing, um, rule, mixed rule sets. So um, I'm just focused on defending my belts, and uh, what will be will be. Um, it'll be a great fight. I think everyone wants to see it. And I, that's what I'm about. I like to give the fans what they want. So um, hopefully one day we can still get it on. Tell me about, um, in, in Muay Thai, um, obviously that we, we know the pay structure in, in mixed martial arts has, has got extraordinarily better. There's, you know, one championship obviously runs uh, mixed martial arts events. They've got some formidable, ha and have had some formidable champions. Um, moreover you know Bellator PFL we know they've got an event in mm -hmm. Saudi coming up next weekend UFC is huge guns now um, and that's grown with uh, wrestling now as well um, what's the situation 
for for Muay Thai fighters and pay is it is it difficult to make a good living out of it uh, out of it and the fact that it's now aligned to things like one championship does that help you in in your situation and your earning capacity I mean uh, growing up through the rankings in the in the, uh, the the UK Muay Thai scene and all that sort them sort of scenes I think it's a little bit hard to juggle just to be a full time fighter but um, at the stage at one championship there are they're paying well. It's getting better. It's getting a lot better. I'm uh, I'm very thankful that I'm able to live live the life of Muay Thai and not have a, a job. And uh, this is my full job. And um, yeah, I'm very thankful. And now I'm the double champ. Uh, I can say it's a lot better if I if I say so myself. Have you had to have a job down the down the way at times to to keep yourself in the sport? Uh, I haven't. Very thankful. I I went down the uh, at the start the um, apprentice sort of stuff. But uh, if I'm telling you, what did you honest, do? What did you do as an apprentice? Uh, plumbing. I went to college. I got my level two, and I just thought to myself, and this isn't this isn't what I want to do. You know, I know I'm I'm very talented at fighting, and um, I just thought I'd I'd uh, pursue my dream. Do you think Muay Thai needs more recognition in the UK? Yeah, one hundred percent. I feel like it's a brutal sport. It's uh, it's very entertaining. I'm not sure if you've seen any of the fights on one championship. Uh, they're literally four ounce gloves, two guys and girls going at it, um, for five rounds. Um, it's pretty brutal. You know, it's pretty brutal. It's uh, probably one of the most exciting sports out there, if I'm totally honest. But um, yeah, it does deserve the recognition. But it is getting there. Um, and it will be, it will be um, up there with the best. Is there Very a point soon. where you do you, do you do any groundwork yourself? Um, in t- I'm, I'm, talk- I'm not talking about labouring now. I'm talking about um, <laughs> it, um, wrestling and, and jujitsu and things like that. Do you do you in, imbibe in those at all? So uh, funny you say that. Uh, I am literally got my eyes on the MMA world champion in one championship, and um, my dad's obviously had an MMA gym. So as a young kid, I was growing up in his gym, and I was doing the basics of sort of wrestling. But um, obviously, I went down the, the Muay Thai route. But um, I've got my eyes on the MMA champion in the One Championship um, organization. So I've been doing a few wrestling and jiu-jitsu moves. So uh, keep your eyes out, people. So who, who who is that, and who would you be targeting in that in that competition? So I'll be targeting my last opponent. So my last opponent was Fabrizio Andrade. I fought yes. and kickboxing rules. Um, for the kickboxing world title, I defeated him, but he is the current uh, MMA world champion. So um, I've beat him at the kickboxing stand up. So I feel like it's only right I can give him a shot at the MMA. Tell me about Dad and the gym um, then, and you know the gym is still there presumably. Yeah, so it's uh, it's like a family run business. It's a family run gym. Um, it's on the middle of Old Kent Road, the busy Old Kent Road. We get some some characters come in along the way. But, um, yeah, it's a great family gym. It's hard working and uh, it's getting better and better. And it's getting bigger and bigger. It's getting more noticed. Um, yeah, the sky's the limit for the Team Underground gym. Yeah. Tell me about Dad and how he got into MMA because he was at the very beginning of MMA, wasn't he? Yeah, so I'm not really too sure how he got into it. I think one of his mates got him into it and then um, he had a few amateur fights. I remember going to his fights um, and then there was one fight, his professional, first professional debut, I wasn't allowed to go. And then um, my nan was telling me what was going on in the fight and she came in and said my dad won and I was over. Um, he just packed it in for uh, for me to pursue my dreams and my younger brother as well. What got him into it in the first place? I'm not too sure. I think just being around people that were doing the actual sport and then he must have just went to the to training sessions and then, yeah, he fell in love with it just as I did. When when you say he was picking you up at the um, school gates um, to get you to go to the gym and, and you know, not knock about with girls and your mates and um, go down to the wreck or whatever. I mean, I know the old Kent Road well, I know the Walworth Road well because it's the first area I lived in in London for the first year I was in London and I'm talking 30 years ago now um yeah. over 30 years ago and it, and it was you know the Green Man pub and all those different places along the old Kent Road and there, there was a lot of drugs on the streets at those times as mm. well a lot um and it was it was quite you know it's quite tasty down there you know um in the evenings um 
did dad was dad trying to put you on a path to make sure you didn't go wayward in any way could you have gone wayward yeah 100 percent. he uh was guiding me on the right path um i had a few friends that went down the wrong path um and uh it's not something that i wanted to do you know i was i was watching it daily people going down the wrong path and then uh I just thought to myself, I can uh, I can pursue my dream and um, become something great. So, uh, like I said, I'm just thankful that I did get pushed, and my dad actually waited outside the school gates for me. I tell him to I tell him that to this day, and he smiles. <laughs> um, tell me a little bit about living in Thailand, um, where you are, um, and presumably you've got endless sparring partners there because you know a local chef. Uh, um, a guy yeah. that, that runs a company will come and train in the evening. And it's something that they do. It's their equivalent of football, isn't it? In this country. It's like people start it at a young age. I mean, there's even, there's even stories of people shaving the nerves off their, off their, off their, yeah, calf, yeah, yeah. Um, to off the calf bone to, to down that bit to make sure that they can. That's pretty, keep... that's pretty brutal. That That's a bit too much. But, but but people have done it in the past, haven't they? Yeah, for sure, for sure. People have done a lot of crazy things, but I just think just be natural and just uh, condition yourself properly and don't injure yourself. Mm, mm. But, it, but it must have, I don't know how long you've been out there, but it must be amazing to be out there the, the, for, for in the, the heat and the, the, mm -hmm. um, being, being able to train in many of those open area gyms and just that feel that you're yeah. just paying homage to you know the four points you're you're, you're there muay thai is that in thai it's their national sport. yeah to be to have gone to the, the 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 source of it must feel like great homage to your sport yeah 100 percent. i uh me and my girlfriend we packed our bags i made her quit her job and then i said we're going to thailand <laughs> and then to pursue my dream so uh we was we were struggling really. We didn't think we was gonna be able to make it. We thought we'd last a month and want to head back. But um ever since we touched down, we're staying in Koh Samui and um it's a great place. We are it we're is. thankful we've got a gym out there. Yeah. Lamai Lamai Muay Thai. So um they've taken us taken us in as a family. So uh yeah, you do get a lot of sparring partners. You get a lot of people from the UK, from different countries coming to the gym to train. And um, you get a lot of sparring partners, but it's great. Like you said, living the tradition, uh, getting used to the humidity. I also fight in Thailand as well. So it's a lot easier for me to get used to it. And um, it's not like a long flight from London straight to Thailand. And you've got to fight in the next four days. Like I'm, I'm ready. I'm locked in. And um, I'm just used to the, the heat, really. And have they got a name for you? Have they got a local nickname for you? Like, you know, the... Uh... The sword, the rapier, what do they call you? <laughs> I mean, they call me the general. There you My go. name is General. And why is that... I'll get it out for you. There we go. There you go. <laughs> why do they call you the general? Um, if I'm honest, I just put it as my Facebook status when I was young. And yeah. uh, one one ring announcer must have uh, seen, seen that on my Facebook. And then he must have assumed that was my name. But um, ever since that, I was uh, knocking people out and I just thought, Okay, maybe this could stick, and then it's just stuck ever since for the last last twelve, thirteen years. And are you happier in your relationship out there? As your girlfriend found work out there, and I bet she loves it. I mean, Koh Samui is a beautiful place, isn't it? Anyway, yeah, no, it's unbelievable. I mean, it's a full it's a full time job for her herself being in camp with me. That dealing with me is a job itself. So, uh, yeah, we we work together. Um, she helps me training, and um, it's just great. You know, you're waking up to get your coffee. The weather's lovely. Um, jump on your motorbike, no T-shirt, flip-flops on, straight to the gym. Uh, just living the life, really. Stop right there. Stop right. You're making me envious. Sorry, I'm no, sorry. You're making, you're making know, 76 I'm... million people envious now. I mean, I, I was thinking, should I just slow down a little bit? But uh, it's great. Well, listen, we wish you the best uh, in defending your belts on on Saturday night, in the early hours, as you say, of Sunday morning on Sky Sports. John, it's great to speak to you. Go Thank make you. it sing, baby, for the UK, for Thank yourself, you. and keep Muay Thai flying high. Thank you very much. It's nice to meet you. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. 
Talk Sport.